For those who don't know my story, when I was 12 years old, I was diagnosed with Tourette's and I was on medication for almost 10 years. When I was 21, I learned something called The Secret and I came off the medication overnight against everyone telling me to stay on it and I had a spiritual awakening. I meditated for three weeks straight and my Tourette's disappeared and I created the podcast to simply preach about everything that most people have in their head but no one ever speaks about, which is what the twitching was. It was too many thoughts inside my head and now I have a platform where I can speak to people and they can get out what's in their head if you want to speak to me and ask me questions twitter now have this new feature called spaces where you can do a live call with me and ask me questions and speak to me so follow me on twitter yes king oliver and uh come and have a chat and if you want to follow me on instagram and see what stories i post also yes king oliver can you hear me i can hear you can you hear me hey i can how you doing i'm wonderful thank you um, so I want you to choose the topic and just let it flow. So just say whatever comes to your mind and then we'll go from there. Let's talk about the dark night of the soul. I don't know why that was the first thing that popped into my mind. Let's talk about Perfect. the dark night of the soul. Go for it. <laughs> yeah. So do you want me to start? Yeah. Yeah. You just, just let it all come out. Absolutely. So most people who start out on the spiritual awakening journey, have no fucking idea what they're about to actually get themselves into because there's this massive process of unbuilding which has to happen right for us to be able to ascend and evolve and um relearn and remember all that we are we kind of need to go through this process of forgetting um everything that we think that we know and unlearning basically our entire life's worth of conditioning and um, identities and hereditary stuff ancestral stuff and then there's also past life stuff so it's really this process of um (laughs) massively unlearning and unpacking and pulling away all of the stuff that is not actually authentically your soul frequency and doesn't align with love so what i see and, and what i notice people who come to me for healing to work with me or just people who are beginning on this spiritual path they start on a journey they start they decide they want to heal something and then the stuff comes up, like the emotions, the pain, the trauma, the darkest stuff comes up and they want to fucking bail. They can't, they can't handle it. They don't know what to do. Um, They're not equipped to deal with the process that kind of starts unfolding for them. And a lot of people go a bit mad. (laughs) They, they really go down into this dark hole. And I, I see it as a beautiful liberating process. I see the destruction as, it's necessary, right? We need to let go of all of this stuff that's not serving us. But I think a lot of people get onto this journey not expecting um, it to be deep work, right? Shadow, deep, dark work. And everyone wants to bypass and be in the light and light and love and I'm going to manifest my best life, not realizing that they actually have to face aspects of themselves, which they've been repressing. I'd love to know kind of what your experience was like. I know that you healed some pretty epic stuff, um, some, some health issues um and what what that you know the healing process was like when stuff was coming up for you to address yeah so layers and layers and layers of things and problems growing up like bullying and somebody saying something or being treated a certain way I had Tourette so I was living in my head my whole time trying to work shit out all of these things layer and layer up and then when you think about it you either get a good feeling or you get a nervous shitty sickening feeling and obviously Mm -hmm. if it's nervous and sickening doesn't make you feel good so you avoid it and if every time a situation comes up in your life that makes you feel nervous and you avoid it it's just going to layer and layer and layer up to the point where you become numb to Mm -hmm. that so you just allow those things and situations to happen because you're already used to that feeling it's like if you're a farmer and you spend your time around cows all day and you come home to the wife smelling a shit that's just what his smell is. He smells like shit all the time. But <laughs> it's because he's in a field for so long that he doesn't know any different, right? So yeah. if you go to monks of farmers, they're going to just see that as a normal country smell. If you go out for a date, that she's going to think, Christ, you stink. So all these layers of stuff that we don't run from, uh, that we don't face, are just there. And I had to face every single thing <clears throat> that went in my life. So when I had my awakening at 21, I had still run from like the bullying from primary school when I was like 10 years old like when the kid threw rubber at my eye and when like two people pinned me down and the whole classroom chased me and somebody picked up a rock all this shit I had to go back and erase so what I did was I went 
back to when I was zero, then one, and then two, then three. And I went through all the shit that happened in those days, erased it, forgave them in my mind, reached out if I could, and then went to four years old, then five, then six, then all the way to primary school, then secondary school, then college. I reached out to everyone, forgave them all. In my mind, I understood why they did it. And I literally knew the only way to heal myself was to let nothing untouched. You have to uncover every single rock, everything that you heard your parents say to each other that affected you, everything you saw, dealt with. You have to literally uncover it all, expose everything and face the shit out of it. And that's the yeah. only way you heal. And people have to experience that pain, which unfortunately they put aside when they felt it to heal. And the more painful it is, the more painful it is going to be. And it's so tricky because you literally have to uncover all the pain that you aren't really feeling anymore, but it is still there. And it's like, how can a human being deal with so much stuff that is just so far away in the past that it's just, it's so complex. And the answer is you need literally one person to take them through those times, which again, costs money, costs time. That's even very complex. The universe is designed to move forward, not go back. And all these situations that mankind has made, it's pretty much fucked up the human soul. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's interesting, I see, and this is my past. Like I used to use drugs to numb the pain, alcohol, casual sex. I used to use a bunch of stuff. And I have a friend at the moment who's going through this. And I can see she's having all this stuff coming up because she's ready to heal it. But she is bypassing herself and taking ketamine or taking whatever to try and not think and not feel it. And I'm like, babe, you need to sit in the stuff that's coming up we can't avoid it right because humans are so used to numbing our emotions like we're taught that our our negative emotions are this bad thing that like how you know how shameful if i feel sadness or grief or rage for me i actually um, i went off antidepressants and that kind of started really deeply my own healing process and i did most of this alone so i didn't have um, a healer or a mentor i saw different people here and there like sporadically but mainly spirit was like no you need to do this alone and you need to go off the meds and you need to just fucking start addressing all of this deep trauma right so i think when i went off the meds i cried for like two years straight just every day just crying and i didn't even know sometimes like what what those tears were from or where it was from or what you know what the story behind it was and it was just really allowing myself to fully just feel it all and just be with it and not have to understand it and not have to analyze myself and not have to force myself to just feel better right and that's the thing like when pe people are going through this people try and help them by saying like be positive like you know just just be better like it's you're gonna be fine and it's like in that moment you don't want to hear that like that's not helpful for me when when i've reached a point of like i'm gonna kill myself and i should probably should have said some sort of like trigger warning there but i have i've reached points in my awakening where i have been pushed to the depths beyond like what any person could fucking fathom i've been pushed to these depths and in those moments where you know, I was like, I, I want to end my life. Basically, I want to check out, I want to leave it. I had to find that strength from within. And I had to be pushed to these points of like, this is so uncomfortable that I need to do something to change. And nothing anyone was going to say to me was going to give me the comfort that I needed to find within myself through my connection to my guides, to my soul, to God, to whatever it is, right? Like those moments are actually pushing you so deep into it that you have to surrender and you have to allow your soul to guide you. So you have to connect to something bigger than yourself because that was like the only thing that's getting me, gotten me through some really um, tough initiations on my path. I'm a shaman, I'm a priestess. Like part of my job is going to the underworld, going to these dark places, not only within myself, but within humanity to witness them, to hold them, to, you know, hold the grief and, and feel the grief that no one is feeling, everyone's repressing and be with it and shine love on it, right? So that's really like what the process is about. And so many people just want to avoid and dull and, and, and like you said, like run away from them and not deal with them. But they're actually gifts, like all this stuff that is coming up. It's a gift. It's making the unconscious conscious. And that's how we create it. It's by having conscious awareness of like what is actually going on in my subconscious, what trauma, what belief systems, what um, stuff am I holding on to that's preventing me from fully embodying my soul or fully uh, manifesting my desires or fully serving people or whatever it is that you desire to create like that stuff that's coming up is the medicine it's the fucking that's the gift that's the alchemy that's where alchemy comes when you can sit in this stuff and transmute it into love and self-compassion and um, understanding yourself and stripping away identities so I find 
honestly, the number of deaths and rebirths I've gone through in the past, like four or five years, I would say like, I've deeply been on the path of medicine, woman, shaman, priestess for like four years. And I've had a death and rebirth every couple of months of like (laughs) this version of myself, no longer, you know, it's no longer serving me. It's no longer serving the people I'm here to serve. It's no longer serving my soul mission. How can I let, let this part of myself die? Loving, you know, the experience that they had, loving what it taught me, but allowing it to die and and let go of it and feel the grief of that um, identity that's leaving and then making space and being in that void for a while of like, I'm in this cocoon and I don't know when I'm going to get out of it, but I just trust that there is this light at the end of the tunnel, right? Like I trust that on the other side of that, there's going to be more for me to experience, more love, more joy, more bliss, more abundance, more purpose, whatever it is. Um, And so I I definitely don't, I, I tend to not shy away from these moments and it's great when you're you know, on the other side of like an awakening because we have so many awakenings in our journey. Like there's layers, right? And then you come back to the same stuff that you thought that you dealt with, with deeper layers. And I find for me, it's like whenever I'm coming up against an edge in my experience of something new, something bigger, some more love, more money, more whatever it is, right? The next leap, the quantum leap, that old stuff, the old shadow is going to surface. The old traumas are going to surface kind of from a different angle. And you get an opportunity to go on this spiral where you revisit them from a higher perspective. And so it gets really frustrating. And what I I get frustrated every time when I'm like, how the fuck is this still showing up? Like I thought I dealt with this, right? But it's it's a different perspective on the same thing. And it's an opportunity to go deeper and to alchemize even more and um yeah, embody even more light. So yeah, I'm I'm wondering how, you know, how your experience of the death and rebirth cycle has been. Well, first of all, I love that analogy. You revisit the same thing, but from a higher perspective, because it's true. Say when mm-hmm. you first suddenly start thinking about it, you're seeing it like from yourself looking out on the same level, like it happened yesterday, right? Mm-hmm. And as you become more aware and you work on your ship, you see the situation differently. So the higher up you go, the more you see the situation, the more in depth you see, you understand their reasoning, you understand why it happened, what they were thinking, what everyone else was thinking, why they were thinking that because of their parents and this, this, and this. You see everything even more in depth. And the more in depth you see it, the more you kind of understand and forgive and let it go. Um, the thing about the gift thing, <clears throat> you see, what is a gift? You give something to somebody, wisdom, value, teachings, whatever. The people who've gone through something, right? You could say it's a gift for them. It's hard at that time. But when you think about how there's 8 billion people on the planet, most of them have issues. You wouldn't even know. They wouldn't even think about it, address it. And unfortunately, they just live unhappy lives in their heads. There's no gift there, right? They don't have the gift to be able to to deal with their stuff, to then share and help other people. Whereas the people that have gone through it, are giving a gift afterwards. So they're the lucky ones who have gone through a situation in order to teach for the better good versus the average person that will never have that ability to give that gift. I just thought that when you said that and that's it's very interesting. Um, Yeah, and it's a privilege and it's an honor. And that's like, I've had so much resentment (laughs) about like having to do all this healing work on myself and having to go through this stuff. And I'm like, normal people don't go through this shit. It's not fair, but it is. It's a fucking gift to be able to, go through it and to be able to like serve people in this way it's a blessing it's a gift and like you said so many people are unconscious and they're not even aware of this stuff and they're trapped in these victim cycles of everything's happening to them and they have no control over their external reality not realizing that they're actually creating everything in every moment <clears throat> even the bad shit right and so it's a gift to have that awareness and be like i am cr- like this is literally what i do whenever something shows up in my life i take full responsibility for what's shown up and i'm like okay this person i've say i've attracted men into my life and he is suddenly abandoning me or well, he's just treating me in a way that I don't like. And I'm like, okay, what part of myself deep down, this is a mirror, right? Everything and everyone outside of you in the matrix is a mirror to something within you. And so I'm like, what part of me created this? What does this tell me about something within me that's either I feel safe in this experience or I desire to create this because I have a victim template running or, um, you know, I don't believe I'm lovable or I'm not enough or what, what is the gift in this showing up? And you stop projecting your shit onto other people when you become responsible in this way, which like 90% of the world don't do that. Right. They're like, my husband made me angry. So I'm going to blow up at him and it's his fault. <laughs> Instead of being like, what part of me attracted this situation? Where is there resonance in him blowing up and treating me this way to how my dad was treating me when I was younger or my mom or, or you know, what other person in the past, um, what is this telling me about 
what my subconscious programming is, where my traumas are, where my wounding is, and how can I alchemize this fast <laughs> or not fast or take the journey of alchemizing this. So then I get to have something that I prefer, right? Like all contrast, all hardship, all suffering is actually a gift for you to decide what you prefer, right? Like that's, and that's, that's like some heavy stuff. Like most people are going to be like, but I didn't choose this. And it's like, actually you did on some level, your soul chose this, right? So I have had lifetimes where my soul has chosen some stuff which is pretty fucking brutal, like being burnt at the stake <laughs> as a witch, like being excommunicated, horrible stuff that I had to remember and process through um, on my journey. And I was so angry at God. Like I was like, how, if you exist and you're real, how are there starving children? How did I go through this? How, you know, is this possible? How would you let anyone experience this pain? And it's like, God didn't choose that for you. You chose that. We have free will. You, Your soul chose that experience because it wanted that experience so it could grow, right? So it could learn what that feels like. So then it could have a different experience. And this is this is something that most people like to judge things as good and bad, like murder is bad, um, love is good, right? And, and, and the perspective of when you go higher up the dimensional kind of ladder and you start seeing things from the perspective, perspective of non-duality or God or consciousness, literally everything is fucking perfect because like for instance, like hate is on this, the opposite or fear is on the opposite spectrum as love. It's the same thing on two opposite ends. And you kind of need to experience fear to then decide, Hey, I don't want to experience fear anymore. And I choose love. So it's like all of these experiences that are painful and they suck they are opportunities for you to have the opposite experience, to transmute that to empowerment or grace or compassion or love or, you know, whatever the fuck it is. And so it's really, really easy to be like, I am suffering and it sucks and I'm a victim and I'm not in control. But it's like, if you can shift that perspective to why did my soul choose this contract? Like, what am I learning in this? Where is the gift in this? Why did I choose to have this experience? And for me, all those times that I suffered and did all that stuff was to strengthen me <laughs> so I could be who I am now to be like, literally, you can throw anything at me and I can go through any experience and I still am devoted to love. Like no matter what fucking happens, I'm still devoted to love, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, what's interesting about that is, so obviously that is, you know, projection and mirroring, your comfortable, comfortability surroundings that you grow up with your, say, not yours, but when people grow up with their parents' environment and dynamics, that's all you know. If you're used to your mum shouting at your dad, then you'll see that is kind of normal. So when a situation occurs with one's current relationship, you'll just shout and argue because that's what your parents did and you won't address the issues. And it could be something simple as, why is, why is my partner shouting at me? Because she told me many times to do this and I didn't do it. Why didn't I do it? Well, I was too busy. And then you think back to your childhood of where your dad was too busy and then the, the mum shouted and it's the same cycle and people don't address their shit. At the same time, a wise person who's working on themselves should know that patterns will occur unless you change them. It's literally by default. If you don't change a pattern, it will occur unconsciously or consciously. Um, what's coming to mind is interestingly, you might find this very interesting because I had a really good upbringing um, um, for my dad in particular. <clears throat> um, not every single person, but I'd say 12 people that I dated, right, their dads either had passed away or they were absent in their life. And I had to understand why am I attracting people who have absent fathers? And it's because they saw, say, a father figure in me. So let's just say they didn't have a loving, nurturing male figure in their life. Naturally, mm -hmm. if you're aware of a situation and you want the opposite, some people either go down the same path or they become aware and do the opposite. For these people, it was the opposite. They saw that they had an absent father and whether they knew it or not, they saw like a loving male figure, which I am, and and and, they, and we attracted each other. And I was like, this is, this is so, this is fucking interesting. Why? Mm -hmm. And I understood. Um, but at the same time, if somebody isn't aware, you're just gonna attract the same toxic people if that's all you've known from past relationships. If your say father was toxic, you're gonna keep attracting the same shit. And the only way out is to sit down and think, why the hell do I keep attracting this same pattern? 
and you have to mm-hmm. go inside mm-hmm. and think what part of me is accepting this what did i see to tell myself that this was normal and often all the time it does go back to environment growing up or maybe even not parents maybe like sibling relationships where you're in your bedroom and then your brother's shouting at his girlfriend and then he storms out it's just what you've accepted as normal and as you say we're all people that can choose exactly what our next step is we can go left Mm -hmm. or go right we can accept this as normal or reject it the hard part is getting somebody to the end of the path where they have to now make a very hard decision to go the path that they should do and when we're just there's so many paths these days there's always another option that we don't actually sit down and face our shit with tiktok and porn and food and tv and always something else to do we're never sitting still for five seconds to think about what we should be thinking about it's always the next dopamine to replace the you know the real depression and the shit inside and that's one of the reasons why society is kind of going to shit because everyone's just creating something to replace that void and that voids are going to be there forever and mm-hmm. until people sit down and talk to themselves so yeah yeah that, it's, that it's really funny it's, <laughs> it's funny that you were saying about the person with the relationships because that's literally like my whole healing journey started because i kept attracting these like emotionally unavailable fuck boys who didn't want to like take me seriously and didn't want to date me like for real mm-hmm. And I, it was like, fucking, I swear, it was like 50 in a row. And I was like, right, okay, I can't sit here and be like, it's everyone else and it's not me. There is clearly something going on with, within me that I'm attracting this. So that was actually my whole journey into spirituality began because I was like, okay, something is going on here and I'm going to listen because what the fuck? So I started doing you know, inner child healing and looking at kind of where I didn't love myself and all of that stuff. So yeah, it's really funny that you said that. The other thing, oh my God, I had a really good point and it's now evading me um, about the void and like people trying to escape and, and fulfill. It's like sometimes you have to get smacked down pretty hard. Like the universe, your soul will scream at you and it will be this like life altering thing that happens before you get the message. Like at first the messages are subtle and they're, you know, delicate and it's like a little tap on the back or like a feather or some repeating numbers or whatever. And it's like, if you continue to avoid, ignore, um, do all this stuff, what I've seen, and I've, this has happened for me in so many different scenarios, when I've been avoiding doing the work, sitting with my stuff or changing paths to something which I know was more aligned for me. And I've been like, oh, I'll do it later. Um, you know, like, oh. it's like kind of like when I was a coach, a relationship coach, and I knew that I was being called to do healing work. And like every single healer or shaman I would run into would be like, wow, you're like the super powerful healer. And I was like, no, I'm just a coach. And the, the knocking on the door was louder and louder and louder. And it was literally like spirit. <laughs> the universe sent me completely broke in my coaching business and took everything from me and made me in this depth of despair and depression for me to be like, okay, fuck, I'm going to listen now. I'm going to actually listen. Um, I've hit bottom and I'm going to listen now to what my soul is calling me to. And it's unfortunate that many people wait until you know, a near death experience or going broke or hitting rock bottom, like I did, um, being at a point where I'm like, I'm probably going to kill myself if I don't do something about this before they decide to change. Right. Because it's a lot easier if you take these subtle nudges and you're like, okay, cool. Something here is not fully aligned and I'm going to take a small action now and start to reconfigure or realign myself with like, what's the truth, um, which is a, that's a practice, right? Like people don't have that skill innately. Like it's something that you learn through the process, but unfortunately it's like, it has to get super loud for some people to listen, um, for some people to actually pay attention and be like, okay, cool. I'm going to go on a, a different path now um, because people are comfortable. Like they don't, they're so comfortable with what they know that the fear of something different, which is the fear of unknown is it's, it's, you know, it's terrifying to them. I remember when I, um, I had my really big, it was a, a huge pivotal point for me in my healing journey. I heard, so I've been living in Melbourne and I had just started my coaching business, but I was still working in film and television, had a boyfriend, had an apartment, all of the, you know, like my life was pretty set up and I was super depressed. And I was like, I know that there's more for me in this world. And I heard this, voice in my head that was so loud and it was like you need to quit your job dump your boyfriend leave everything and move to bali (laughs) and i've been to bali once for like (laughs) 10 days and i didn't even like it and i was like that is the craziest fucking thing that i could possibly do and i kind of need to do it right it was like i have to do this i don't know why 
there's like a long story about why like Bali there's definitely I have an affinity with this land and the spirits here in Rara Rara it's a purification portal but for me it was doing something that was so out of my comfort zone mm. so unknown so like took me out of my mindset and my groove and my daily behaviors and my daily environments and in the same thing all day like wanting something different it was such a shock to my system that it gave me the space to do something different and honestly like my life now is just it's it's crazy because at the time I was manifesting like I desired to have a, a business where I worked for myself and I did something that didn't feel like work and like I didn't know about the coaching industry when I started kind of manifesting this I just wanted to be paid really well to basically chill out all the time and just be myself and <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't yeah I mean, it was pretty <clears throat> awesome didn't know I had these gifts didn't know how fucking amazing it could get didn't know that I'd be super connected to spirit and experiencing things on like a regular Tuesday that most people don't even get to experience in their life right so it was like so much better than I possibly could have fucking imagined but in order to get even close to that I had to do something that was so out of my comfort zone that had me having a fucking panic attack like being like what am I doing this is like this is the craziest thing I could do right and most people will never take that leap. Like they will, they will have an opportunity to take a leap and do something crazy. Like it'll show up. The universe will be like, here's this opportunity. And they're so afraid of what could go wrong. What could happen? Um, what, you know, what if it doesn't work out that they never take the risk. And so I see here, there are so many successful entrepreneurs, influencers, like crypto people, coaches, healers, right? All I'm surrounded by these highly successful people all the time. And it's the same fucking story of each and every one of them was brave enough to face their fear and do the unknown thing. And that's not necessarily moving to Bali, but it's like thinking outside of the box of like, this is the life that everyone has and I desire something different. And I'm willing to, willing to take a risk that this isn't gonna work out. Like for me, it was like, I go do this where my Greek dad is like, entrepreneurs never make it, you're gonna fail and blah, all the fear, right? All of his programming and fear of like, I want you to be a doctor or like a psychologist, make lots of money and have a husband and have a set up life, right? all of his shit was projected on me from the minute I made that decision. And I had to just sit in my truth and be like, I could possibly have to crawl back to my parents completely broke with my tail and my legs, which eventually did happen after a year because it didn't work the first year of my coaching business. Um, Cause I was avoiding being a healer long story short, but I had to face that and be like, okay, am I willing to deal with the pain of this failing? Um, and is that pain more than the pain of me staying where I am? Right. And the pain of me staying where I am was I would eventually probably kill myself if I kept being where I was so unsatisfied, so unfulfilled. So like knowing that I'm here for something and not connect the pain of not connecting to my purpose had me in deep depression from the age of like 15. Like I knew I had something that I was here for and not connecting to that and not fulfilling that and not being, being and doing that. Um, it was just so painful that I was like, well, if there's this slight, small 10% opportunity that this crazy leap that I'm about to take is going to pay off, then I'm, I'm taking that risk. And since then, there's been many, many, many leaps of faith that I've had to take where I've literally jumped off a cliff and been like, spirit, catch me. <laughs> um, but it's always, always, always worked out. Like it's always worked out. And even the things where they didn't work out immediately, or they didn't work out the way that I'd hoped them to work out, or I thought that they would work out there's been a gift in them, right? Like it's always been a huge lesson or a gift or some sort of like evolution for me. Yeah. So I don't know if you've seen this, but on Netflix, there's something called Human Playground. And I recommend you you look this, uh, you check okay. this out, write this down, Human Playground. And basically it's cultures all around the world from bullfighting, swimming in the Antarctic, to jumping off a cliff, to... African tribes smacking each other with sticks.